Do you watch the show? Do you watch Squawk Box? Do you ever get a chance? Court, uh, now and then. Do you watch Desenhall, Eric, yesterday, saying that the only racism that suddenly somehow okay is, is anti-Semitism among these college kids? And I keep making the point again and again. Yeah. The lowest common denominator on safe spaces and microaggression, they, they somehow are able to, to be totally outraged by the most ridiculous things, and yet they, they're the same ones that are now saying genocide to the Jews. Yeah, like, How do you explain that? Look, you got it right when you were talking to Walter a few minutes ago. It's a bizarro, upside-down world when you can be canceled for misgendering someone, but somehow you get celebrated for describing your Jewish class. You can get fired as a college professor for, for misgendering. And oh, yet we had professors who were out there celebrating. So I have given you a lot of grief about throwing your lot in with the woke left, too. I, I, I wouldn't. Uh, here's, right. here, <laughs> in the past, and right. I've been right all along, but here's what Holman <laughs> Jenkins, I think we have this for you to read, and you okay. can respond to it, because I, he's right. Somehow Elon, when it was all said and done, right. Elon, they took this, this tweet and turned it, but here's what he says. The 37 words of interp uh, interpolation for a six-word tweet, Yeah. Uh, the, uh, he, he hardly... He heatedly denied it, and the journal examined the content and said what Mr. Musk was really exercised about was you, the ADL, because he thinks you've largely adopted the identitarian and censorship agendas of the progressive left. And look, I've given you grief about that. So you throw your lot in with them, and look what they give you. Look, if pushing back on, on you know, white nationalism and the great replacement theory is somehow identitarian politics... I don't know what to tell do you, you. Do you think those hundred morons in Charlottesville are the problem, or do you think the college professors that have totally brainwashed our children on the left with anti-Semitism, where's the real problem? Look, let's acknowledge that, like, shooting Jews praying in a synagogue in Pittsburgh Terrible. is a problem. I, I, I do not. Attack, you know, uh, death threats against a Cornell student are a problem, right? We can have problems from the extreme right, the white nationalists, and problems from the hard left and the crazed anti-Zionists. Like, these are both problems. But right now, let's be clear. Like there's we a are thousand to at, one. There's a thousand. These, the, yeah, they're look, crowded. These there college. is no... Look, we have tracked almost 1,500 anti-Semitic incidents in the 50 days since the massacre. That's a 300% increase over the prior year, which was, at the time, the highest number we'd and ever seen. how does seen. October 7th engender that exactly? Yeah, I mean, this blaming the Jews... What's that? This collective blame. It's a despicable form of hate. And trying to legitimize anti-Zionism is contemptible. Well, and it puts us I in guess this position. If you're taught that, uh, you know, America is, is right. imperialist and yeah. that it's a terrible place and that Columbus is, yeah. you know, it, 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 all these things that we've canceled and that we've done and we've watched it happen on college Joe, you, I mean, I will tell you, the image of these protesters tearing down American flags last week you know, at Grand Central Station. The image of these people ye yesterday trying to violate Rosalind Carter's memorial center. Do they think that Hamas would treat them well, some of these marginalized groups? I and Hersi are... Ali got it right. Queers for Palestine? That's what I mean. It's just idiotic when Hamas literally lynches LGBTQ people. So it's very, it, like you said, it's a bizarro world, but now the question becomes, what are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? And so look, at ADL... We are pushing back on this hate on the college campuses. We launched with Gibson, Dunn, and Crutcher uh, and a group called the Brandeis Center, a legal helpline for students to report Title VI violations. And that's what we should be talking about. Because it's yeah. waiting for these presidents. God bless Just the Congress. Just explain to people what Title VI is. So this is federal funding. Yes. Yeah, so Title VI of the 1964 Civil Rights Act protects students from discrimination based on ethnicity or national origin. That includes Jewish kids. And so the universities could lose federal funding for violating, creating environments where these kids aren't safe. So look, I applaud Bill Ackman, I applaud Mark Rowan for, you know, using their muscle to try to get their alma maters to do the right thing, Harvard and Penn. But I'll tell you something, if these college presidents can't find their moral center, I will go to their trustees and remind them of their fiduciary responsibility. And think about this, Becky, in three weeks of launching this line, we have over 260 cases. We've trained up now 125 lawyers. We're going to be bringing these cases like an armada against these institutions. How much of that federal funding goes to private universities outside of states? Oh, I don't know the exact number, but we're talking about 
hundreds upon hundreds of millions of dollars for each of these. So the university might not care about one donor pulling back his or her million dollars, but losing an NIH grant worth hundreds of millions of dollars, they're going to listen. And that's what we're going to do. So it's no longer about, again, your moral obligation, although that should be enough, but now it's about your fiduciary responsibility, and that's a whole different line of discussion. Have you had conversations discussion. with any of these university presidents? Oh, I have. It's about this in particular? The title yeah, and they're all now struggling to figure out what are we going to do. I mean, at our prodding, the Department of Education has now launched several investigations, really? and many more are coming. The other thing we're trying to do is get the groups that are pushing the anti-Israel agenda on campus and intimidating the Jewish students looked at or kicked off campus. It's very weird that the knee-jerk reaction to these, these, these college presidents in the Ivy League, the knee-jerk reaction, where, does that, where was that uh, incubated? In it's been happening for years, I guess, right? Yeah, I mean, look, anti-Semitism on campuses isn't new. And you're right to point out a, minute, a few minutes ago, it's coming from the hard left. From the anti-Zionist extremists, and that's an oppressor oppressed. Uh, yeah, it's this crazy victimology that that posits that uh, diversity, equity. Inclusion where are you with Elon? Where are you with people. Elon right now? Uh, is, are you in another detente? De detente, uh, detente number four. Look, or Elon is a <laughs> Elon is clearly a complicated guy. But I, I you see will, what he was could have been alluding to. Now it's not nearly as if you. I mean, you should never say. Someone brought something on themselves. I mean, that's like the last thing they look like. I think we know Elon. He said it to me more than once that he's very impulsive. He yeah. will tweet or retweet out things that then he regrets. Like he deleted this Pizzagate conspiracy tweet <laughs> that he put out yesterday. Yeah. Look, it, it is hard to make sense of everything that he does. But here's the bottom line: Twitter being a safer place, X being a safer place for Jewish users, is good for everyone. Yeah. Um, and by the way, we should point this out. X is not the only problem. We need to be talking about TikTok. We need to keep talking about Facebook. All these social media problems have rampant anti-Semitism on them. And that is part of the reason why we're in this fix.